Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 11 part 2b on monoclonal antibodies. These monoclonal antibodies are not what we are producing in our body. When we are producing antibodies in our body, it is specific for many and uh, there are many many antibodies produced at the same time and each antibody is specific for one antigen and it's a mixture of many different antibodies actually okay monoclonal is only one type of antibody is produced in like a huge bunch and it's specific for one antigen only now you might be a little bit confused here because you'd be like, hey, but all this time we've seen the diagrams and it seems like only one type of antibody is produced per pathogen. Well, this is when your mind gets blown because pathogens actually have more than one surface antigen, right? A pathogen can have many different cell surface proteins, they can have different cell surface glycoproteins, and that means when our macrophage engulfs it and cuts it up to present it on the surface it's not going to be one type of antigen on the surface the cut up pathogen will have multiple antigens multiple cell surface antigens and therefore when we have an immune response towards that particular one pathogen the antibodies produced are just not one type there are many types okay however each type of antibody is specific for one antigen that does not change okay so why is it that we want to talk about monoclonal antibodies this is because we want to produce drugs we want to make this in the lab we want to use this as a drug to help other people when they need extra antibodies or need to use to cure toxin you want to know what you're producing and you want to make sure that in your drug there's only one type of antibody instead of several. Now this is the problem when it comes to manufacturing antibodies in labs though. B cells that divide by mitosis, if you isolate them, they do not produce antibodies. So these are activated B cells but they have not differentiated into plasma cells. They can divide by mitosis but they do not produce antibodies. However, if you take the plasma cells that has been differentiated, they can secrete antibodies, but they do not divide by mitosis. So it's very hard to get a single antibody and a lot of that one type. You know what I mean? Because it doesn't divide in a lab. So here's an interesting solution. There's a spoiler on the other side here. But the solution is, take plasma cells which secrete antibodies, okay? And you take myeloma cells or cancer cells which can replicate limitlessly and you fuse them together when you fuse them you get something called hybridoma cells and hybridoma cells will be able to do two things divide and produce antibodies and that is a combination we cannot naturally find but we can mix synthetically in the lab so how do you produce these from scratch what you need is a mice or a small mammal and the antigen you want the antibody to be specific to so it could be a pathogen it could be uh, something else okay obviously you in the first step is to inject the foreign antigen example is a pathogen into the mouse then you allow some time for the mouse to have an immune response towards the antigen. So of course, um, ideally the mouse wouldn't fall too sick and the mouse will have an immune response just like yours, okay? Activated B cells, activated T cells, plasma cells, T helper cells, T cells, memory cells, okay, all those things, um, just like you do. So allow the mouse to have that immune response and then after that, you gotta kill the mouse, dissect the mouse and collect its spleen. And what we want from the spleen is actually plasma cells. Now we take all these plasma cells and we fuse it with cancer cells to produce hybridoma cells. Now if you look at this picture here, you realize that this plasma cells from the spleen is multiple different colors. And the reason is being, don't expect, if you inject a pathogen, don't expect one antibody to occur. 
right, one antibody you produce. It will have multiple antibodies, right, multiple B cells will be activated, multiple plasma cells will be activated, and multiple types of antibodies will be produced in large amounts. So you get many, many different plasma cells from the spleen. But it's okay, we will separate it later. Just take all the plasma cells, all the different types, fuse it with myeloma cells or cancer cells to produce hybridoma cells. Now, after you're done with that, okay, we are going to clone them. So we take all the different types of plasma cells just now, and we use some sort of medium for hybridoma growth. We clone them, so we make many, many of them. And then we screen for the cell secreting the desired antibody. So usually we will separate the different plasma cells into different wells, so different holes, different holes will have different types of plasma cells. And then we just pick one, one hole, one type of plasma cell with one type of antibody. And then we can take these hybridoma cells with the antibody, producing the antibody that we want, and we can grow it in large scale culture. And then after that, you be, you will result in a huge amount of one type of monoclonal antibodies. Now you realize here there are some words here that I didn't mention during the procedure. I had medium, and here there is fusogen for fusion. Uh, these are materials needed in the process, but um, they are usually ABPs, that means other valid points in the mark scheme. So the more important things are highlighted in red, like usual. So that is how you produce monoclonal antibodies. Now you might be thinking, why do we need it? Why do we need to produce this drug? Um, other than the fact we want to give it to people. Now, it's actually very really useful for two things. First of all, is diagnosis, and second of all, is treatment. Diagnosis is sort of like detecting a disease, right? Why is it that monoclonal antibodies are perfect for the job? Monoclonal antibodies actually have the same specificity and detects only one antigen, right? They're all the same type of antibodies. Now, this means it can distinguish between different pathogens or even different strains of the same pathogen. So it's very specific and it's very fast because you don't need to culture the pathogen, it can detect without um, doing much. It's less labor intensive, all you need is maybe some blood or maybe uh, some fluid sample and then dip it in and it should work. And if there is a quicker diagnosis, this means a quicker treatment for patients, so it's a win-win for everyone. Of course, the antibodies itself are not visible to the eye, so it has to be tagged with a fluorescent label or dye, so when it binds, then it lights up. You don't need to know the details behind this procedure, but if you're interested, let me know and I'll give you a link to read an article. So, why do we want it to light up? Well, other than the fact, like in pregnancy tests, <clears throat> when we use it to detect a pregnancy, we want to see the color and the bands. Um, other than this, it's actually very useful in detecting the location of tissues which express the antigen. For example, I can tag it with a radioactive dye, for example, uh, make it specific to some cancer cells or some blood clots, and we can take an MRI scan in order to see what part of your body lights up or responds to or is radioactive in order to find out where exactly the cancer cells or the blood clots is. Monoclonal antibodies is amazing because it's cheap, it's safe, it's fast, it's easy to use and it's quite accurate. Um, fun fact, monoclonal antibodies are used in the detection of COVID-19. So the antigen test kit that you hear a lot in the news, those are actually antibodies on a stick and then uh, put some blood on it and you should like that. The, uh, the result should be ready in like around half an hour. Very quick. Now, um, just so you know, diagnosis, when we talk about diagnosis, is diagnosis of diseases. Now, pregnancy is not a disease, okay? So pregnancy test is not included in this slide very much, um, but I put down a note here that is also used there. It's also used in blood typing, so you can use 
monoclonal antibodies that is specific to certain antigens on your blood so whether it's A, B, AB or O the monoclonal antibody can detect that and tell your blood type now as I said number one is diagnosis number two is treatment treatment is when NA MABs are used to target specific disease cell by binding to receptors on its cell surface So maybe it could kill the cell because you know how antibodies bind to, can bind to pathogens and make it easier for macrophages to engulf it. So if you could target the monoclonal antibody to certain cells which are damaged or, or maybe cancer cells which have problems, then it can take the cancer cell, bind your cancer cell, present it um, to the immune system so that the macrophage can engulf it and form an antigen presenting cell. This can really help uh, the patient recover. Other than that, you actually can attach radioactive substances or drugs to MABs to kill the cell. So it itself, the antibody with the drug attached, you can see here, can be used in order to treat certain cancers or certain cells. Other than that, of course, MABs can bind to antigens on pathogens as well. So these are disease cells, these are pathogens here, and result in artificial passive immunity, as we have learned last video. But you know, it is not a perfect treatment. I know it's cheap, it's fast, and it's effective, and possibilities are endless here. But there are some problems here. The problem is that it causes some side effects. It is not perfect. And the reason is, antibodies made in animals like mice or small mammals can be recognized as non-self. Your body knows whether the antibody belongs to you or not. And this triggers the immune response in humans, and this is what we call an allergic reaction. Other than that, a problem is that it remains in the body for a short period of time as it is destroyed after a period of a while. Because you know it's recognized as non self and the immune system attacks it. So, if you are under monoclonal antibody treatment, then the antibody needs to be administered more than once in very small amounts in order to prevent side effects as well as make sure that it is it's still in the bloodstream for a longer period of time. The solution is pretty complicated. It sounds easy here, but it's actually pretty complicated. It's to make the monoclonal antibody look more like the human monoclonal antibody. So still make it in the lab with the mice or the small mammal, but make it a little bit more human. How do we do that? Well, we can alter the gene so we can use modif genetically modified mice in order to produce more human-like antibodies. Okay. Or we can maybe change the type and position of sugar groups. Remember, antibodies are glycoproteins. So change the type of position of sugar groups attached to the heavy chains of the monoclonal antibodies so that the arrangement of sugar groups are the same as human antibodies. And therefore, when injected in the person, the person immune response may not be stimulated because it looks like humans. In reality, there is actually many types of monoclonal antibodies. You can see here is a 0% human. Murin means it's from mice. Uh, it could be fully human, it could be humanized, or it could even be half human, half not human. So there is, um, there is a range, and obviously the more human it is, and the lower the potential for immunogenicity is in. The lower, um, the, the more human it is, then the less chances your immune response is going to attack it. But what I want to get here is the generic suffix behind the name of um, monoclonal antibodies. You can see some example names here, infliximab, rituximab, impilimumab, it sounds strange, but MAB actually stands for monoclonal antibodies, and, um, but their name actually tells you whether it's fully human or murine or chimeric or humanized. There is no need to memorize any diagrams here 
So this diagram here, you can quickly ignore. There is no need to memorize its names. I'm just telling you as information, as these names are found in the textbook. But it doesn't come out for exam ever. So it's fine. Just understand that, you know, the way to avoid immune response is to humanize the monoclonal antibodies to make it look more like a human antibody. And that's about it. That's it for monoclonal antibodies. I hope you enjoyed this chapter. This is one of my favorite, favorite chapters. Um, and with that, we have finished with AS. Yay! Okay, bye.